Now to the coronavirus pandemic and possibly more booster shots on the way. An FDA advisory committee meeting today to discuss Moderna's third dose and decide whether it's safe and effective. The same process expected to begin for Johnson & Johnson on Friday. ABC's Whit Johnson has the latest. Tonight, booster shots for millions of Americans who got the Moderna vaccine, now a major step closer to authorization. We do have a unanimous 19 out of 19 yes votes, and that concludes the voting portion. A key FDA panel voting unanimously to recommend that third shot six months after the second dose for anyone 65 and older. 18 and older at high risk from an underlying health condition, or 18 and older whose job may put them at greater risk for exposure to the virus. If the full FDA and CDC sign off next week, Moderna booster shots would roll out to the same groups now eligible for the Pfizer boosters. Given that Pfizer blazed a trail with its booster, it made sense that Moderna would follow suit. There were no safety signals involved. and. What we're trying to do is bring your immunity up to the point when you were first vaccinated and essentially these boosters will do that trick. The Moderna booster would be only a half dose after data indicated that was enough to restore protection. Overall, the Moderna vaccine has remained highly effective against severe illness and hospitalization, showing less waning over time than its counterparts Pfizer and J&J. Still, Moderna says its booster shot given at least six months after the second dose increased protective antibodies by 15-fold one month later. Moderna also finding side effects from its booster were similar to those after first and second doses. But today, some panel members arguing the main focus should be on getting the 66 million eligible unvaccinated Americans their first shot. The people who are in the ICU aren't there because they haven't gotten a third dose. They're there because they haven't gotten any dose. Tomorrow, the panel will review the Johnson & Johnson booster, along with data on the effectiveness of mixing vaccines. An NIH study also finding there could be an extra benefit for people who got the J&J vaccine to get a boost from Pfizer or Moderna. I think these early studies are pointing to the potential value of mixing and matching, but it's likely too early, and we're going to really need more data to see sort of full recommendations. And soon, 28 million children between the ages of 5 and 11 could be eligible for their first vaccine shot from Pfizer as early as November 3rd. Today, President Biden promising those doses will be ready to go. If authorized, we are ready. We have purchased enough vaccines for all children between the ages of 5 and 11 in the United States. Thank you very much for that report, Wit. And joining us now for more is Dr. Alok Patel, a physician at Stanford Children's Health. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining us once again. Moderna is opting to go with half a dose for its booster shot. Why do you think that is? You know, Stephanie, I think it's basically, according to what Moderna was saying, was that this half dose from their early data showed less reactions in terms of kind of people feeling sore or just kind of feeling crummy after getting a shot. You know, and this might make a difference in the long run, it may not, but one of the concerns brought up by the committee was that, hey, but all our data is based on the full 100 microgram dose. So is this really going to affect that long-term immune response? It's too early to tell, but it seems like Moderna was just trying to play it safe, given that there's no real long-term data on a booster and how it's going to affect people. But the bottom line is, is two things that people should know, is that the booster is still safe. And if you got the full dose without the booster, you still have incredible protection against hospitalization and or death. And doctor, of course, researchers are waiting for more of that data, but looking forward to tomorrow where mixing and matching booster shots will be discussed. Do you expect the FDA to eventually green light mixing and matching? I do. I do. I really do. So mixing and matching or heterologous vaccination or heterologous priming, if you want that million dollar scientific term, is not a new concept. It's been around for a while. And there's studies out of Europe that looked at Pfizer and AstraZeneca and they showed a good response when Pfizer followed the AstraZeneca shot. And this is kind of analogous to what we saw when Johnson & Johnson, kind of an, an adenovirus DNA vaccine, was followed by an mRNA vaccine, Moderna or Pfizer. And I think not only does this give a more robust immune response, but it also will increase the availability for a lot of people out there, including the 15 million who got a Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But it is important to note that the studies showing this only show the antibody response, and there are two arms to the immune system. So... It is going to require a little bit more detailed analysis, and that's what we're all looking forward to with tomorrow's meeting.
And so many people have questions. So let's say if someone received the Johnson & Johnson shot and the FDA does green light the booster, would you recommend mixing and matching instead of getting a Johnson & Johnson booster? Stephanie, I'm already getting this question right now. People have been messaging me about this even before the mixing and matching study was coming out, and it's a hard one. You know, I think there's there's two ways to look at this right now. Yes, if you were if you were faced with both the Moderna Pfizer vaccine, I should say all three, and the Johnson and Johnson, you needed your booster. According to what we know right now in terms of the data and the early analysis, I would go with a different vaccine if you got the Johnson and Johnson one to kind of give you that heterologous primed boost. But then someone else might say to me, hey, I just want to get two Johnson & Johnson shots because I got it the first time. That's okay. It's great. That's going to be totally fine. We're not saying that you're going to be severely impaired. Remember, all these studies are just based on antibody level, and there's a whole other thing to think about. That's the memory component of the immune system also. And I think this is going to be an important asterisk for the committee to address because there's a lot of people out there with varying levels of exposure and underlying risk. Okay, so since mRNA vaccines have been proven to be so effective and the technology now allows scientists to produce new ones incredibly fast, do you see a future where mRNA vaccines become a new normal and we're getting mRNA shots, for instance, to prevent other illnesses? 100%. I think mRNA technology is here to stay. It's gonna take a lot of education towards the public because people are acting like mRNA technology came flying out the gate and all of a sudden we developed a vaccine in one year. And in reality, mRNA technology has been around for decades. And scientists have been using this to study vaccines potentially for Zika, Ebola, tuberculosis, HIV, even gene therapy, looking at cancer treatment, autoimmune disease treatment. I mean, this, the, it, the list goes on. And the technology is brilliant, it's cost effective. You can scale it up a lot faster. It uses materials that are already accessible. And the mRNA technology is almost like plug and play. So we could even get a more effective flu vaccine from this. And so I think that the, the future is very bright when it comes to mRNA technology. We just need to make sure that we're doing the right education towards the public and we continue that worldwide collaboration, which just produced incredible results when it came to this mRNA vaccine against COVID. Dr. Patel, you have covered so much for us tonight. We really appreciate it. We will be calling you back, okay? Thank you. I'll be here. mRNA for the win. <laughs> Thanks so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.